So I made a video previously on this state of parallels and the M1 Max. And as of about three weeks ago, it just didn't work at all. And it obviously wasn't compatible. About 12 hours ago, I got an email from Parallels saying that they have just released their beta version that is compatible with the new M1 Max. And I decided to download it straight away, test it, and make a short video showing you guys my findings. So without further ado, let's jump into my base model M1 MacBook Pro, and let's take a look. Okay, so before you're actually able to use Parallels on the new M1 Max, you need to obviously download a few things. Now, I will have a video on this showing you exactly how to do it a little bit later on. But for now, the main thing you need is obviously Parallels. So if you haven't purchased Parallels, I'll have a link in the description. It is an affiliate link. So make sure you go on there and purchase Parallels first if you don't already have it. And then the second thing you need to do is you need to actually come out to the technical preview for the M1 Mac. Now this is the URL, so it's my.parallels.com slash desktop slash beta. And this will actually take you to the page where you can download the beta version of Parallels for the M1 Mac. So if we scroll down this page, and obviously make sure you're logged in, uh, you can see here, step three, install and activate. So you just wanna click that, you wanna download it, you wanna install the beta version of My Parallels. And then what you wanna do as well is this particular version of Parallels on the M1 Mac, as you can see here, it is not possible to install or start an Intel x86 based operating system in this virtual machine. So what you're gonna need is a Windows ARM.ISO to actually use Parallels. So now if you come to this particular website here, you will have to create a Microsoft account uh, and you will have to sign up as a insider preview. Uh, and that's gonna actually allow you to download the Windows 10 ARM Insider Preview, which is the most up-to-date ARM version of Windows. And this is what's gonna let you actually use Parallels on your Mac. So again, I'll have a full tutorial and walkthrough video showing you this a little bit later. But for now, as you can see here, I now have Parallels installed. So if we actually open it up, and we click on Windows 10, and as you can see there, Windows 10 is loading up perfectly fine without any issues. You can see I've actually got some apps installed already. So I've got Steam, I uh, have a couple of benchmarking apps as well. Um, but I've been playing around with this for a little while and there's absolutely no issues. So I can come in here, I can actually pause it if I want and there's zero issues. I can restart the VM, absolutely fine. Uh, installing x86 programs like Steam, totally fine. I will be testing out some gaming shortly, but what we might do first is we might just do a quick little benchmark test and we'll see what we're getting. So we'll go on to Geekbench 5 and we're going to run this CPU benchmark. Now, while we're actually running this benchmark, let's bring up the activity monitor. And we'll have a look at what the CPU and the RAM utilization is like. So as you can see here, it's barely using any CPU. Again, remember this is doing a benchmark test at the moment. It's only using, well, it, it does fluctuate obviously because it's benchmarking right now. Um, but you can still see we've got quite a bit of idle there. Um, but I think the most important thing to look at is actually the memory usage. So you can see here the Windows 10 virtual machine is using almost six gigabytes of RAM. So that's pretty much everything that is currently available on the Mac, it is maxing it out. But it is good to see here, it's only using 1.6 gigabytes of swap memory. So it's obviously running quite well, otherwise we would see a huge amount of swap usage here. Uh, but in just day-to-day -day use of Windows 10 on this VM, no issues at all, it runs very, very smoothly. So we'll minimize that and we'll go back to the Geekbench test. Okay, so we can see here the single core score was 1439 and the multi-core score was 2700. But you guys have to understand this is a beta version of Parallels running a beta version of the Windows ARM operating system. So that's even to get, even for this to run at all and get any kind of score is pretty impressive. Now, if we actually go and look at the comparisons, so we're looking for about 2,700 on the multi-core score. So if we scroll down here a little bit more, we can see we're getting equivalent to about a 2012 Mac mini or a 27 inch late 2013 iMac. So obviously not the most powerful thing ever, but it's still pretty decent for what it is. Now we'll be doing much more detailed benchmarks shortly, 
I just thought I'd give you guys just a really brief overview of parallels and just to obviously show you that it does work and it does work fairly well. Now, if we come down here to the start button and we click power and we click shut down, you can see that the VM is gonna shut down very, very quickly without any issues at all, uh, which is really interesting to me because previous versions of parallels would sometimes have issues, uh, but you can see there that's just shut down straight away, no issues. We can quit the Parallels program itself. No issues at all, shuts straight down. Anyway guys, that's it for this video. Again, just a really brief one, just to show you the current state of Parallels and running Windows in a VM on the M1 Max. As you can see, it's very, very early days, but it is very promising. And I'm excited to see what the next few months is going to hold. Anyway guys, stay tuned on my channel for more Windows 10 and VM testing on the M1 Max. But apart from that, thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.